No matter how much we've grown in Christ, the Scriptures urge us to excel still more. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. We all need to have a godly heart. Stay tuned. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in search of the Lord's way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search the Scriptures for God's will. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 1, Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel still more. The Scriptures reveal the will of God and urge us to do our best to be followers of Christ. Though we've done well in the past, we can all excel still more in faith and in love. Are you growing in Christ? Thanks for taking time with us today. We want to be a part of your life each week. The Lord calls us to be like Him in our attitudes, in our speech, and in our behavior. You'll remember the Lord Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said, You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Of course, no one can be sinlessly perfect as God is, but we can choose every day to walk in the light as He is in the light. 1 Peter 2 and verse 21 says, For to this you've been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in His steps. Jesus is our perfect example in how to think, how to treat others, how to forgive, how to serve, and how to love. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Some time ago, my brother-in-law, Dale Hartman, told me his heart was every day set upon growing closer to God and being more like Christ. I know that he's not alone in that worthy goal, but his words encouraged me to do more. Have you set your heart on serving God? Now, we offer this study on the godly heart free. If you'd like a printed copy or CD of our study, and you live in the United States, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083, or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org, or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also have materials free on our website, searchtv.org. The Edmund Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Colossians 3, 12 to 15, and we'll explore our need to have a godly heart.
Our reading today comes from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. This letter was read to the brothers and sisters at Colossae, but was also read by other churches as well. So, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Yes, those are the things God would have us do and to be. Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful for your love, and we're thankful, Father, for your word. Help us to put on a godly heart and to do your will always. In Jesus' name, amen. addresses the brothers and sisters in Colossae, describing them with three adjectives. He first calls them chosen of God. God calls us through the preaching of the gospel. And when we receive and obey the good news of Jesus Christ, we become chosen or elect as God's children. Second, Paul calls them holy. When a person is washed clean in the blood of Jesus, God sanctifies him or makes him holy. Then he belongs to God and can no longer have an ungodly heart that ignores God. Third, Paul calls them beloved. Christians realize in their hearts that God's great love for them is in Christ. And Paul had already revealed the difference that God had made in their lives. Colossians 1, 13-14 says that He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For this reason, we, we can't live like those who don't know the love of God or the gospel. God desires that we take off our worldly hearts and put on hearts that conform to His love and His will. First, He calls us to put on a heart of compassion. To have compassion means to sympathize with others. We are to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Romans 12 verse 15. Jesus blesses those who care. On the day of judgment, the king, you remember, will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew 25, verses 34 to 36. Second, we must put on a heart of kindness. God has acted in kindness towards us, when He sent His Son Jesus to die for us, according to Titus 3 and verse 4. Now, kindness considers the needs of others and often does for them what they can't do for themselves. God saved us through Christ 
And a kind person is warm-hearted, considerate, generous, and benevolent. It's one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. One cannot be like Christ and act cruelly toward, uh, toward others. Third, we must put on a heart of humility. Philippians 2 verses 3 to 4 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. If the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, could lay aside His garments, gird Himself with a towel, and wash the disciples' feet to leave us an example, surely we can humble ourselves and serve others. We'll never be what God desires if we are haughty, proud, or arrogant. Love isn't arrogant. It instead builds others up. Arrogance and pride don't build character. 1 Peter 5 and verse 5 says, All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Fourth, we need a heart of gentleness. Jesus described Himself as gentle or meek in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. He said, Come to Me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn from Me, for I am meek that is gentle and lowly or humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for My yoke is easy and My burden is light. Meekness refers to strength under control. The strong person who shows gentleness to others rather than handling them roughly or abusively. The Lord Jesus was meek, but He was not weak. He promised in Matthew 5 and verse 5, Blessed are the gentle, that is the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Fifth, we need a patient heart. Love is patient. It maintains a peaceful and tranquil heart while waiting for a desired outcome. It continues to be steadfast, even when it's provoked. God is patient with us. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God is patient with us in the hope we'll change our hearts. And we should be patient with others as well, hoping they too will change their hearts and be like Christ. People can change when they have a reason to change and truly want to. Sixth, we must put on a heart that bears with the weaknesses of others. Philippians 4 verse 5 says, Let your gentle, that is forbearing spirit, be made known to all men. The Lord is near. Some people allow their frustrations over even the smallest matters to boil over into anger and even vengeance. Ephesians 4, 26-27 says, Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. We must learn to control our tempers and take the experiences of others into account. They may have very difficult lives, which prompts them to act rashly or unkindly. Let's have reasonable hearts. Seven, we must put on a forgiving heart. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. The Lord Jesus asks us to forgive 70 times 7. The Lord Jesus simply said in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. If we have a complaint against another person, Let's go privately and humbly to them for an explanation. 
as Matthew 18, 15 teaches. It's better to win your brother and reconcile than to live in anger. And if your brother listens to you, you've won your brother. Eighth, we must put on a loving heart. Love binds everything together in perfect harmony. Love unites and brings people together. Selfishness and pride cause division and conflict. The Lord Jesus said in John 13, 34 to 35, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus wanted us to love each other the way that He loved us. You'll remember He said in John 15, 13, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. True love is willing to sacrifice for the good of others. Selfish and hard-hearted people will not sacrifice like Jesus. The Christians in the church at Corinth in the first century were divided and spiritually immature. Like little children, they, they wanted their way and they boasted in themselves. Paul reminded them in 1 Corinthians 1, 31, Let him who boasts boast in the Lord. We may have many talents and gifts, but if we lack love, we are nothing in God's sight. 1 Corinthians 13, 1-3 says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Let's put on a heart of love for our brother and for all. We are called to be one body. Ninth, we need a heart that lets the peace of Christ rule over our hearts, our words, and our actions. You know, it's better to endure a small personal wrong and maintain peace than allow strife to grow and split a congregation. Causing division is a work of the flesh and will cause people to be lost. Galatians 5, 19-21 the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. If you wish to be a son of God, then work for peace and harmony among God's people. Romans 12, 17 to 18 says, Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it, as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. We can't control what other people do, but we can control how we respond to what they do. Some people enjoy conflict and they love a fight. We can't control the events of this wicked world, but we can place our trust in a faithful Creator who will do what is right. 1 Peter 4.19 says, Therefore those also who suffer according to the will of God shall entrust their souls to a faithful Creator in doing what is right. We must do what God wills even if the whole world is against us. Tenth, we must put on a thankful heart. Thankfulness to God for what Christ has done for us is the foundation of what it means to be a Christian. We must keep focus on the cross of Christ and the price that He paid for our sins. That cross draws us to Christ in love and gives us a reason for hope. In Christ we have an abundant life and every spiritual blessing. How could anyone be a Christian and ignore the blessings that we enjoy in Christ? Colossians 3, 16 to 17 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him 
to God the Father. Let's worship with songs of thankfulness. And let's give thanks every day in all that we do. We serve a great God and have a great promise in Christ of eternal life in heaven. A thankful heart is a joyful and a contented heart full of hope. You'll never find true joy until you get in the habit of thanking God. We live today in a society where the focus is on ourselves. We're obsessed with our possessions, achievements, and comforts. We wish to achieve greatness, but we'll never achieve greatness until we become servants of God. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 20, 26 to 28, that whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just as the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. Now, if your heart isn't what God wishes, please don't stay that way. Repentance is a change of heart that leads to a change of ways. God can give you a new heart if you'll let Him. He promised Israel through the prophet Ezekiel, And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. And I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they shall be my people and I shall be their God. Ezekiel eleven nineteen 19 to 20. You too can have a new heart, a new mind, and a new spirit by placing your trust in the Lord Jesus and obeying Him. Won't you turn your heart to the Lord? Let's pray together. Oh, Father, help us always to look to you and to set our hearts on serving you and doing your will. In Jesus' name, amen. There is no higher calling in life than to love God with all our hearts and to love our neighbor as ourselves. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8 says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. A loving heart is a believing and obedient heart because it loves God. It does its best to please Him in every respect. The heart of Jesus decided doing the Father's will was more important than doing His own will. Jesus didn't quit on the will of God because the Pharisees were hypocrites, or because the religious leaders opposed Him. Jesus didn't quit on the will of God when Judas betrayed Him, or Peter denied Him, or the other disciples scattered. If you would have a godly heart, then lovingly, humbly obey the Lord Jesus. Place your trust in Him as the Christ, the Son of God. 
Repent by turning your heart from evil and pursuing righteousness. Confess the Lord Jesus as the Christ and be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Baptism into Christ was a baptism of a penitent believer and it was an immersion, an immersion in water to wash away our sins. The New Testament never speaks of sprinkling as baptism, nor does it record the baptizing of an infant. These are innovations, human traditions, and we must not trust the traditions of men, but with a godly heart follow the Scriptures. Won't you be baptized into Christ today? We hope that today's study of a godly heart has encouraged you If you live in the United States and want a free printed copy or CD of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way. Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. Now you can download these lessons or a newsletter online at our website, searchtv.org. There's also a schedule of our programs and a map with the location of churches in your area. You can watch Search Anytime on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Search TV Ministry. We also offer free Bible correspondence courses. And if you get a hold of us, don't worry. We're not here to get your money. We're here to help you get to heaven. There's no better day than today to get your life back on track by worshiping at church. There's probably a church of Christ in your area. Why not worship with them today? Well, we'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend about the program. And as always, we say God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.